and I TikTok so that you don't have to. If you don't want to get in the, the algorithm or anything, all you got to do is show up, hang out on Twitch, and you'll get all of the goodness that you could ever want on TikTok. And so, without further ado, I've got three of them. These are, I'm going to just double check what they are. Yeah, they, these, these kind of vary. There's nothing here that's just like hilarious. I wasn't... I wouldn't really feel my algorithm wouldn't really feeling hilarious, right? Oh yeah, do, do not do not feel Chrissy, you I I can taste your sarcasm, right? Like it's it's I'm chilly. <laughs> That's a, I'm, I am moderately uh in discomfort here. Um so today's TikToks are not they're not funny. Uh it's you know, like I said, it just it wasn't and not that I didn't see funny TikToks, because I absolutely did. They just weren't hitting. And so, um, here we go. Ooh, it's a 30 heat wave. Uh, so, I'm going to turn off. I should probably just make a button that does that instead of having to do that. Here are the TikToks for today. That should technically not exist, and here's why. But first, my name is David. I'm this is an oh. ocarina. That should technically not exist, and here's why. But first, my name is David. I am a lifelong Zelda fan and an ocarina specialist with over 20 years of experience. These are just some of my credentials, but let's continue. I first discovered the instrument through the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time back in 1998, but the instrument in this video game was inspired by the classical ocarina, first conceived in 1853 by the Italian craftsman Giuseppe Donati, who himself was inspired by vessel flutes. These are these little clay whistles that have appeared in additional cultures around the world for thousands of years and at the time of Donati there were these little whistles in the shape of goose called ocarina so it's an Italian word for little goose and him being a craftsman and a classically trained musician decided I want to try to come up with a serious version of this clay flute and what he came up with was this classical ocarina this is an actual piece that was handmade by this man here and this particular shape exploded in popularity across Europe into the United States and eventually into Japan and we see evidence of this by looking at some screenshots from the original Ocarina of Time for Nintendo 64 if you look at the linear finger pattern on the Ocarina but what we got in marketing materials was this seven hole Ocarina so what happened let's look at the Zelda timeline what instrument did we have in the first Zelda game it was actually the recorder in 1986, a popular documentary came out called The Great Yellow River, and the soundtrack was composed and performed by this man named Sochiro. His music was so revolutionary and featured the ocarina that all of Asia became obsessed with the sound and wanted to play the ocarina themselves and feature it in so many different mediums, including Miyamoto. He discovered the ocarina and was like, I want that. Let's get rid of the recorder. Let's put this in the video game. So from that point on, in A Link to the Past, we got our first ocarina. You can see here, it's definitely a linear pattern, not what we have in the Ocarina of Time. Link's Awakening, my first Zelda game, actually has a very similar shaped ocarina. So what do we get for the Ocarina of Time? This weird thing. Mm -hmm. What the heck happened? <laughs> this is my theory. So we have this shape of the ocarina, but because they were still two years into marketing the Nintendo 64, they wanted to try to manipulate us, I guess. And they thought, well, we have this controller and let's try to see if we can merge these two things together. So they took the buttons configuration, this A, B, start and C buttons and squeeze it into the ocarina. And that's what we have here today. In theory, this should not work because if you look at yeah, this, if you look at the configuration of the <laughs> ocarina, you can see that we only have these three fingers here, but over here, how are we supposed to play these four fingers? Ladies and gentlemen, today we actually achieved the impossible and we have an ocarina that can play this. And because you've been so patient in watching this whole video, I'm gonna play you a special song. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Uh, Never information I would have had otherwise in any other way, shape, or form. I would not have gone out and got any of that information myself. I don't know if I would have even asked the questions of, could you play that? Should you play that? Is it real? I, I don't know. It's video game stuff. Um, But all I know is he played the Song of Time at the end. And so we probably just, everything we knew before now is a Mandela effect. So enjoy that. Um, man, like that's his major, 
right? Like, I don't know if you caught that or not, but he was talking real fast at the beginning. This is an ocarina that should technically not exist, and here's why. But first, my name is David. I am a lifelong Zelda fan and an ocarina specialist with over 20 years of experience. These are just some of my credentials, but... An ocarina specialist. I'm sorry. An ocarina specialist. Didn't even know that was a thing. Hats off, David. Hats off. <clears throat> All right, this next one... Uh... This, this one might break your brain a little bit. Okay, so by now we all know that mirrors don't flip left to right. They actually flip front to back. And I made a whole video about this that you can go watch. You guys had a lot of questions. Seeing my t-shirt backwards, my t-shirt flipped. The B is on the right. <laughs> the B is on the right. So why do we perceive a reflection as a flipped image on a Y axis? Let's take this example. If you write a word on a piece of paper and then hold it up to the mirror, the word will appear flipped left to right, right? But the mirror didn't flip the text. You did. Here's how to prove it. If you cut out the word, removing all of the paper around the letters and then hold it facing you the right way, you'll see that the mirror actually doesn't flip the word. But if you turn it around, it's backwards. This is because a reflection and a flipped image are two different things. Inconveniently, we call them both a mirror image, which just goes to show how sometimes language can make us see things that just aren't there. I probably watched that video seven times. Seven times. Just trying to... <laughs> trying to understand at all what that was saying. And then she cut out the, the Shrek and she flipped it around. And even then my brain was like... My my right hand, my right hand. I watched another dude. I went down kind of a rabbit hole. I'm I'm not gonna lie. I went down a rabbit hole of videos that she's created on topics just like this, and she said uh, something to the effect of, "It's our brain trying to make sense of the things that we see." Right? Obviously, do do. But more than just the interpretation, it's trying to fill in all sorts of gaps. And so, what we perceive, the reason it looks backwards to us is because we think, because <laughs> we're stupid, we think that the person in the mirror is a, like if somebody had walked behind the mirror and was looking at you. That's what we think. And that it's flipping the image, but it's not. And you're like, well, but if, this is the part that really hurt me a lot, but if, if it were flipping the image, like, then what you see should be backwards, right? Mm, it's all about perspective. You're still viewing from your perspective. It has no need to flip the image at all. It's just giving you a one-to-one -one of where you're at. And she was talking also about like why, why cameras and stuff do that, that it's not even a true reflection. It's a digital flip, which is different. And so I just, anyway, I hope you guys didn't want to think about anything else today. Like you... Sorry about all the work you're not going to get done because you're trying to, you're going to be standing in front of the mirror. I can tell you that. Yes, she was shooting it with a camera. Yeah, absolutely, Caffeine. Absolutely. And she talked about that in the next, well, one of the videos that I, I watched. But the Shrek cutout was flipped, was the flipped image of the backside of the paper. So it is still flipped. When she flipped it, it was flipped but not when she had it. It's, it's just like, all it's doing is it's giving you the information the way it sees it, just right back at you. Yeah. Yeah, and enjoy. Enjoy uh, trying to get your brains to go back into your head after that one. Reminds you of those stop signs that are correct on both sides. I don't even know what that... No, Anna. I'm not... Go it's, it's witchcraft. It's absolute witchcraft. Yeah. I don't practice the dark arts, okay? I don't have Hogwarts legacy yet. And so, like, it's a thing, okay? I understand that. I don't have to I don't have to get it. I just have faith that it all works properly. All right, here's our last one. This one. So th this one's this one's a little deep. This one's a little serious. It's kind of tongue-in-cheek. It has a wee 
bit of language um, in it, a wee bit. I would still say that it's probably like safe for work, but it has a wee bit of language. I think our one last week had a lot more language in it. And I don't mean to like go out and find ones that are just like cursy, but I like the points that some of these videos make. And so I'm willing to kind of uh, stretch things just a little bit, right? This isn't a rated M for mature stream or, you know, anything like that. That's not what we're doing. But I think that the the points that are being made in this next video and videos like, you know, that kind of fall into this category, um, I think they're worth sharing. So just a warning, there is a little bit of language at the end. So let me get all this straight real quick. So tell me our country isn't going in the wrong direction without telling me the country isn't going in the wrong direction. I think this is great. People have an issue with this. They didn't have an issue, though, with what Sam Smith did or what Madonna did for the world to see. But the Super Bowl decides that they're going to do this advertising during the Super Bowl. And there's an issue? I mean, so what? Maybe it'll help some people wake some people up a little bit. Sam Smith looked like a whole scene from hell. That was fine. So this is where we're going to rest for a minute. Is that, I'm, I'm this, these are these are conversations that I that I want to have. Um, I don't think we need to watch that again. I think that it, it kind of you know speaks for itself, stands on its own. Um, but when we were talking about the Super Bowl earlier, I told you we we're going to come back to the halftime show and all that stuff. And I think I, I, I mentioned it earlier that I, you could make a pretty strong connection correlation between the S. Aesthetic, how things looked, how, you know, Rihanna was dressed. And what happened at the Grammys. Um, and so, like, it's it's one of those deals where, like, everything was pretty similarly visual um, in some aspects, in most aspects, actually. And so, there there is that kind of correlation. But also, I legit, dude, I legit stopped looked had the conversation and was like i don't really understand help me understand if there's even a need to understand right but the sentiment of this tiktok this video which was why is it i think he even came home and told my wife i was like why is it that these are the things that are are act i don't i don't want to sound flippant or anything um you know but these are the things that are are being pushed in the public um, this is, this is the, the narrative that's being perpetuated in the public. And dude, those, the, the, the that show the Grammys, something else, something else, man. Halftime show, told you, I, you know, I, I felt like it was pretty, pretty gratuitous, um, and, and vulgar. And it was like, it was saying, it was saying things, man. Like it just was, this is not me being a stick in the mud, man just not but it was and I think I think that it is interesting at the very least at the very least I think it's interesting that that is okay and it's not just okay it's, it's publicized it's pushed it's emphasized but the moment we want to talk about Jesus that's that's too much we've crossed the line it's too far now you can take whatever you want from from this this guy, right? This TikTok. You can draw some some conclusions if you absolutely want to about uh, may, maybe things that you thought this guy might think, categories you you thought he might fall into, um, you know, v views of the world, political lines. You you could you could make all sorts of conclusions, but the fact of the matter is. He sees the inconsistency. That's huge. That's a big deal, right? 
You looked up Sam Smith? Uh... Have, have fun. Have fun with that. You know? And I'm not here to shame anybody or do anything. I'm like, I'm looking at the, the broad strokes, big idea, full picture, as best as we can see it right now. Right? And it's pretty easy to see these things are glorified and these things are vilified. Okay? And the things that are vilified are you cannot... You cannot talk about Jesus. And if you do, you're a bigot, you're a terrible person, you hate LGBTQA plus community, um, you are uh, just a, a overbearing, um, all sorts of things. And what happens is <clears throat> people that have represented the Christian faith, religion, that have represented that and have done those things, everybody else gets lumped in with that. And so I think that the fallacy, I think that the fallacy in that is it's 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 not all everybody, everything. It's not. Um, I would hope part of what we try to do here with Love Thy Nerd is to help change preconceived notions that nerds have with church culture and that the church has with nerd culture by showing you that at the very least, it doesn't have to be like that. And at best that it shouldn't, right? But we never say that it's not because that's the experience that people have. But it's difficult. It's real difficult to have, to have conversation. It's not impossible, it's just hard to have conversations when you're like, man, I what I'm trying to help you hear and get and understand is love and acceptance, peace that surpasses all human understanding, um, a joy that can be found in the midst of grief. Like these are the things that we're trying trying to get across to you. Um, and it, it starts with Jesus. And so for me to say, Jesus loves you, like I fully understand. I understand the hurt and the pain and the the accusations and all of the stuff that comes with all the negative context that comes with that statement that has brought so much life to me and other people that profess and live a life that is holy and pleasing in the eyes of the lord i know that and that is a big reason we take the approach that we do at love thy nerd which is the avenue for relationships because that's the only thing legit i believe that, that that's that's really the only thing that's going to break through the law of the lord is perfect converting the soul god's going to do what god's going to do right he's going to get in there he's going to harden hearts and he's going to like melt hearts of stone that's what he's going to do okay but for you and i the way that we can show people that that's not what it's supposed to be like is legit first of all to it like accept that Admit it, apologize. Um, so maybe like a little triple A there, accept, admit, apologize. Even if it's not your fault, just apologize. Uh, and then just spend the rest of the time that you have with that person showing them, proving to them, being the hands of Jesus by loving them well. And I think to me, I would assume, I would assume that the person in this TikTok has some of those people in their life. I would assume that. I wouldn't go so far as to say that this person is a follower of Jesus or loves them well. I don't say that of a lot of people um, because I just don't see it to be true. Even for people who say that they are. Right? So I'm not going to assume anything on any side of the coin, but I do think that this person has some solid people in their life. That's the fruit that I see on that tree. Outside of that, uh, it, it, like this is the world we live in, right? Like I'm not, I'm not entering into a boycott. Um, I watched the Super Bowl. I didn't watch the Grammys because I didn't. I need to watch the Grammys, but I went back and watched the performance of the Grammys so I could be knowledgeable. I could understand what was happening. Um, I could have um, the experience of experience. I guess I could say instead of just speaking foolishly about things that I don't know anything about. I don't want to do that, and I don't think that any of you should do that or anybody on the planet should do that 
thoughts, but more often than not, that's what happens, right? Is like people just spout off about things that they don't know about. That's where we get a lot of um, a lot of conversations that we have as an organization and also as individuals that we end up having with like parents and church leaders and all sorts of stuff about uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. And it's just by every account and, um, you know, by the, the sheer definition of the word, it's ignorance. And so I try not to be ignorant. And I think that this person is also doing their best to not be ignorant. And I love that. I think that that's fantastic. And I uh, appreciate and applaud that. And to me, this is where civility lives. It's not where it comes from. It's where it lives, right? It's where it comes to stay. So try to do the same. You know, when I feel like there's there's injustice, when I feel like there is there's something that needs to be said, there is is a person or a people group that needs to be stood up for, that's what we do. We try. I don't want to say as hard as we can because I don't think that that's accurate, but we try really hard to represent and love them well in those moments and the moments after, because that's what really matters. Um. All right. Oh man, uh, people don't, uh, people read, but they don't process. Um, look at the success of clickbait articles. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you need to see the commercial that was aired during the Super Bowl still. I, Chrissy, you can go watch it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's fine. You'll see it after the Super Bowl. That's the thing, they pay so much for these ads, they just run forever after the Super Bowl. Um, that being said, I mean, we knew that it was coming. These Jesus Gets Us ads have been all over TV, social media for a while now. I've been seeing them for a couple months at least. And I mean, I get it. Are they earth shattering? They're like, oh man, yeah, that's, that's, I, hey, did you know everybody? No, they don't, they don't do that for me. Um, you know, but I, I would hope, I would hope that they would allow people to identify, because what they're trying to do, here's what the ads are trying to do, right? This is the marketing, all right? If you don't have a marketing mindset, this is what they're trying to do. They want you to connect, accept what's going on there, empathize with the situation and the people in it, and then at the end, then they're like, and that's what Jesus is. That's 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 the that's the vibe that Jesus has. That's the flow that and so it's it's a little bit of gotcha journalism, but in the most positive way possible. Um, it's trying to expose uh, common ground that maybe we're not as far off as you think that we are. That's what it's trying to do. And so I, I'm here for it. I think it's great. I love it. Yeah, they were through the playoffs. Absolutely.